Hello, first long moto camping trip. We have everything kind of jankily put in here. Kawasaki Vulcan 900. Classic. Compression bag, backpacking, backpack. Uh, we got a mattress, air mattress, self-inflating. Another backpack barely hanging on here. And in here, but there's a hatchet, tent, and a charger. Three USBs attached to a 12 volt, like a cigarette lighter. It is run on this cable all the way there. So we're gonna be leaving from the Twin Cities here in Minnesota and go out to the Black Hills, first Nebraska, Black Hills. This is my first major moto camping trip. I'll be going with my girlfriend, Gabby. Destined to leave in a few minutes here. We're doing our last minute preparations. Um, we're expected to hit some storms. I'm gonna try to grab a lot of this I can, record as much as possible, use the selfie stick as much as possible just to annoy everybody. Make this as safe and as productive and as enjoyable as we can make it. There'll be highs and lows probably. Sure, nothing will go as planned as you should probably know Like if you ever travel. Drop your attachment to outcome. Here's everything. We're gonna get it set up. And then we'll be on our way out west. This won't be Gabby and Mai's first adventure either. As much as I love traveling by myself, it's good to be able to trust somebody when you're on the road. We've been backpackers through Central America together, and Gabby, a Costa Rican, is one tough Tika. Traveling with a partner is good because you can rely on one another. It's also good to have backup when things get too stressful. I wouldn't suggest traveling with more than four or five people because too many opinions lead to people compromising and not seeing everything they want to see. I also forbid myself to go on tour groups around countries. That's someone else's adventure, and in my opinion, too expensive and far too lazy. Your travels should be what you make of it. I know what you're thinking. This ragtag, sloppily put together motorcycle is extremely inefficient. There's stuff hanging off everywhere. You couldn't have got a better backpack. Hard, lockable side bags for the sides. Smaller, more compact equipment. And that's true. A lot of the equipment that I have isn't ideal. Many of the things strapped to the bike are old and not particularly meant for a moto camping trip. These videos that I'll be making are to show you that anyone can travel. How little you have to work with, I believe everyone should. I believe that experiences are more important than material possessions. You don't have to learn to ride a motorcycle, and you don't have to be very outdoorsy and go camping. I just challenge you to travel. I've only started camping three years ago. I was never in the Boy Scouts. At the time this video was created, it had been one year since I took my written motorcycle test. After a long Minnesota winter, I bought my motorcycle in May. I've been riding for less than one season at this point. The gist of it is, you're watching someone who may be just as inexperienced or less experienced than you. The only thing that matters is that you drum up the courage to do it. Well, I've never been here before, but here we are at Minnesota's biggest candy store. Probably sweet enough, but I figured maybe she could get something. And my dad's riding with us to the border. Also known as Jim's Apple Farm, this vibrantly painted yellow barn is quite hard to miss. Open during the warmer months, this store isn't only for candy. It's an orchard, farmer's market, community gathering place, and antique store with small theme park elements all rolled into a tourist trip. According to Food Network magazine, this place is the size of a football field with over 3,000 kinds of candy. It boasts the world's largest pop selection, applewood smoked deli, daily fresh baked pies, and everything from chocolates, syrups, ciders, and licorice to habanero jerky. It's even home to its own scandal, when recently it was decided they would put hashtag caramel apples matter on their sign outside. Personally, I think that the apple orchard and candy industries should stay out of current political civil rights movements. I guess any publicity is good publicity out here, however, because this place is packed every weekend. Either way, I think they should just stick to traditional advertising.
Along the banks of the Minnesota River is a small city named Mankato. It's also where my alma mater resides. This is the last major spot before we hit the Great Plains. Go south or east of Mankato and the trees give way to extremely flat farmland full of corn and those amber waves of grain that grow in the breadbasket of the U.S. agricultural economy. Mankato is also where Little House on the Prairie, the TV series, took place, but was not in the actual Laura Ingalls Wilder books. I wish I could tell you more about Mankato, but we had to hit the road quick before the storm. Once we hit a gas station, it was time to leave my father behind so the storm could chase him home. We were heading right into it. So, we're just outside of St. James. I figured because the storm was coming, that we would hide in the rain out of the rain. We found this gazebo at a rest stop. Gabby's being lazy, taking a nap. <laughs> so we're gonna wait for this to pass and then run through it. If you have time to rest, so does your battery. Keep them as close to 100% as possible during downtime. Even though it's uncomfortable, I don't mind riding too much in light rain. However, if you're on a motorcycle, you should drive in the ruts of the cars that have driven on the highway in front of you. It's much safer. It's hard to get a grasp of how big the U.S. is until you really get out into it. As a millennial, it's foreign for me to imagine crossing the U.S. without all our interstates that were built less than half a century ago. Long before the West was tamed, there were natives who lived off the land hunting buffalo here for millennia. Mankato resides in Blue Earth County. It got its name from the abundant, high-grade blue clay that was perfect for natives to use for pottery in the southern plains of Minnesota. This unique blue clay can be found for hundreds of miles away down and up the Minnesota, Mississippi, and Missouri rivers, showing us that the natives of these Great Plains had quite a vast network of commerce. All that remains now are fields with fences, the occasional small town with its token grain elevator, and a lot of time to think while driving over it. Anytime you do find yourself at a restaurant, be try to be as cost effective as possible. I find that if you buy enough for two meals, your dollar goes a little bit further. Just make sure you can take it with you. The sun is setting and we're nearing the border. I think I'll leave this episode right here and pick up in South Dakota for the next chapter. Thank you for viewing and I hope you'd like to watch more Two Wheels, One Compass. And remember current and future travelers, drop your attachment to outcome.